Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I don't think I have to go into details about what type of paper it was. Previous faculty members have done that. I will focus my discussion on science and tech only, science and tech section only. So in last few years, one clear domain of technology, which is one of the focus areas of UPSC, is environmental technology. So even today, for ex even in this year's paper, you'll realize that at least there are three, four questions which we have categorized in environment because even I teach those topics into environment only. But essentially, they are questions of technology. Think of questions about membrane bioreactor. Of environment, we discuss yeah, question about distributed energy source or fuel cell electric vehicle. All of these questions are essentially questions of technology. But since these technologies are being utilized for solving environmental issues, so we have categorized that into environment, right? So, but in rest of the sections, I have, I guess, seven or eight questions. And here also, there is one very interesting trend, which is very clear that most of the questions of science and tech are from current affairs. But this year, particularly UPSC has focused questions upon those topics, which were not necessarily in news in last one, 1.5 year. They were in news a lot, two, three years ago. But in last one year, particularly, they were not in lot of focus. So often I discuss those topics in our foundation batches rather than in current affairs classes. Right. For example, I will start with the very first question of the paper. So I have this question number is from sec, jo set A. Hai. So do not again worry about the question number that will differ in each and every set. Now, this topic was in news in 2021 a lot. Because in 2021, one of the agencies of ISRO had announced that for space launches, we are going to use radioisotope thermoelectric generator. And uh, that time it was covered in much, much more detail. But I actually did find a ref reference to this particular topic, not in Hindu, but in Hindu business line. Hindu ka apna ek business newspaper bhi aata hai. And in Hindu business line, in July 2023, there was a coverage about, again, the same technology, radio thermoelectric generators, ISRO, BARC, join hands to develop nuclear engines for rocket. And the last reference in Hindu, that article which I have given here, that article is from 2022 or 2021. So not necessarily a current affairs inspired question because nobody reads the Hindu business line per se. Right. But at the same time, this is one of the most popular applications of nuclear technology. And it will remain directly or indirectly in news a lot. Just say, think about this particular mission of NASA. This mission is called Voyager 1. Voyager 1 is a mission which was launched 40 years ago in 1980s. In fact, early 1980s, it was launched. And as of now, this mission has crossed solar system. It is not even part of the solar system. And even then, NASA has a deep uh, space division, very powerful antennas, and they're able to receive signal from Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. It takes about 19 to 20 hours for that signal to reach to Earth. They are so far away. So when you read about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, often you can have this question. So again, science and tech is all about curiosity. So you can ask two questions here, that the signal must have weakened a lot. And even then, NASA is able to receive that signal. So clearly, they are using very powerful antennas for that. But a more important question and a more fundamental question you can ask here is 
that what is powering this particular spacecraft. So if, as long as you are in solar system, one of the source of power which you can rely upon is sun. That you have solar panels, those solar panels are charging your battery. And with that battery, you are gathering data and you are sending that data back to Earth. But if, by the way, solar energy is not a reliable source of energy, that is why there is so much of focus on energy storage these days. Battery, energy storage, this is also UPS in a question. So there is so much of focus on finding alternative sources of energy without relying upon solar energy. And the same is also true in case of space technology. That for interplanetary missions, and for even missions like Voyager 1, Voyager 2, who have completely crossed the solar system, where solar energy cannot be relied, forget about reliance, you, it cannot even be utilized, cannot be even received, then what is my source of energy? So that curiosity then will allow you to know about this particular technology. That if you read about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 and you ask this question, that what is powering this? How it is getting energy from? And that is how you get about radioisotope thermoelectric generator. So I have given two pictures here, three pictures here. This is a picture of a NASA's rover called Curiosity. It is as of now roaming around on the surface of Mars. This is picture of Voyager 1, which is not even part of solar system. It has crossed solar system a few years ago. And both of them are powered by something called RTG, radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which essentially means that in a container, in an isolated container, which will be part of the overall spacecraft, but at the center you have a container, and in that container you keep, keep an radioisotope. And the radioisotope which we use is plutonium-238. So the radioisotope which you use is plutonium-238. Now plutonium-238 is not at all a stable nucleus. It is quite unstable. It releases alpha particle. And when it releases alpha particle, it converts into uranium. So plutonium is converting into uranium, a very important radioactive reaction. Now, radioactive is, radioactivity is something which we have to know uh, from nuclear technology. That alpha particle which is released, it has a lot of energy. You have materials around this container, center may plutonium-238. You have materials which absorb this alpha particle, that alpha particle has a lot of energy, that energy at is, is, it is absorbed, that converts into heat energy. It increases the thermal energy of your container. But now here is the catch. There are certain materials which can convert that thermal energy into electrical energy. Those materials are often called thermocouples. So it is possible that you can convert that thermal energy into electrical energy. And hence the name, radio thermoelectric generator. So radio here signifies that radioisotope unstable nucleus plutonium-238, which is being used to produce thermal energy, hence the word thermo, and that thermal energy is now being utilized to convert into electrical energy. And that electrical energy can power your spacecraft. So when you are very far away from sun, you are traveling in Kuiper belt on Jupiter, on Mars, beyond solar system also, then in such cases, this is the source of energy which you utilize, right? So UPSC and ISRO has not used this technology till now in any of our spacecraft. But there is a deliberation going on. There is a discussion going on. ISRO is collaborating with Bhabha Atomic Research Center that maybe in future missions, uh, in subsequent years, we will be utilizing this technology. So this was in news a lot two, three years ago. It was also covered here and there as I gave some references, but UPSC asked a question on it. But the way it was framed is an easy question.
at the first statement these are miniature fission reactor second question is they are used for powering the on board system of spacecraft so for example if i am reading it for the first time let's say that i am reading it for the first time i do not know even about rtj can i attempt this question at least i can conclude one thing that both of these statements cannot be together simultaneously jo nuclear reaction hai fission reaction hai it requires a reactor Re reactor requires huge space reactor requires having a controlled way of reaction which can produce electricity so second statement it's saying that we are trying to have a fission based reactor into a spacecraft how large will be a spacecraft and by the way fission reaction if not controlled it will become atomic bomb so not only we are trying to have fission reaction we are also talking about controlling that fission reaction into a spacecraft which is very far away from earth that does not make sense so one thing which should be very clear that both first and second cannot be true together so i immediately know that my answer is either 2 and 3 or 1 and 3 right third statement is so anyways first statement is actually not correct here that it does not use fission reactor it has applications in space technology it is one of the most powerful application of nuclear technology in the field of space technology so you eliminate first you have your answer 2 and 3 third statement that rtg can use plutonium 238 which is actually true which is a by product of weapons development now let me give you some context here that when you enrich uranium for weapon development for making atomic bomb then one of the by product which we produce here is plutonium 238 so plutonium 238 is not something which is found in earth's crust you cannot mine plutonium 238 you have nuclear reactions and these nuclear reactions will produce plutonium 238 which can be recovered and now it has some other application into space technology so it it's a again very interesting application and how we cannot we do not have to rely upon solar energy in this particular case so in this question answer is 2 and 3 only one of the easy question if you know about it this is a very easy question right so i, I will the only uh, surprising thing for me here was that this was something which was in news a lot 2 3 years ago not in last one year right so i take classes in regular batches and current affairs classes also but i, I don't think i have taught this in uh, current affairs classes many of you are from current affairs batch also so i don't think i have taught this in current affairs classes but i i do teach the same topic in regular batches so upsc picked something from uh, which was in news 2 3 years ago and they made a question out of it right if you have any doubt here you can ask questions so let's go to the next question then developments in astronomy has been a favorite topic of upsc for past few years now look at the 2023 paper they had a question about some of the terms from astronomy were given and what do they describe that was given in another column and the question was how many pairs are correctly matched right if you remember that question nebula cepheids or pulsar and the description was asked so this has been a favorite topic of ups in both prelims and mains examination by the way the developments in astronomy you have to know about and in this context they have asked this question again it's a very interesting question something when you learn about life cycle of star that how stars emerge and how do they die then you learn about this and it, it's it's a very easy question again if you know about this if you know the fact then it's a very easy question if you do not know then also some logic can be applied giant stars live much longer than dwarf star dwarf star here means small stars compared to dwarf stars giant stars have a greater rate of nuclear reactions तो ये तो बहुत क्लियर होना चाहिए दैट ए कैन नॉट बी ट्रू हियर दैट ग्रेटर रेट ऑफ न्यूक्लियर रिएक्शन इन नो वे एक्सप्लेन्स दैट जाइंट स्टार विल लिव लॉन्गर राइट इवन इफ इट इज ट्रू तो सबसे पहले तो देन द डाउट विच विल इमर्ज हियर इज दैट इज द स्टेटमेंट वन ट्रू देन एंड टर्न्स आउट इट इज नॉट एट ऑल ट्रू एंड बाई द वे द डिफरेंस इज ह्यूज फॉर एग्जाम्पल सन इज वन ऑफ द डॉर्फ स्टार सन इज क्वाइट एन एवरेज स्टार one galaxy can have few hundred billion stars 
and in observable universe we see about 2 trillion stars minimum 1 to two, sorry 1 to 2 trillion galaxies and every galaxy has few hundred billion stars so universe is really huge and in this huge universe sun is a very average star right and we are part of a very average planet by the way so there are stars we have found the largest star for example which astronomers have discovered is as large as the entire solar system. So think of from Sun to Kuiper belt to Pluto and this entire region is covered by Sun itself. So you have stars which are thousand times bigger than Sun or even bigger than that. Now here is a very interesting fact that an average star like Sun, Chupura main sequence hai, that survives for more than 800-89 billion years. So Sun ka pura main sequence hai, that is at minimum it is going to be it, sun is already about 4.6 billion year old star and it is going to live for at least 4 to 4.5 billion years more. So minimum main sequence of sun before it becomes a red giant or white dwarf, it is going to have a life of about 9 billion years. Compared to that, if a star which is very huge compared to sun, let's say 50 times bigger or 100 times bigger than sun, the bigger it is the life cycle reduces drastically not even simply so a star which is hundred times or thousand times bigger than Sun will have a life of few hundred million years so compared to 10 billion or 9 billion few hundred million is very less and the fundamental reason here is that the rate of nuclear fusion reaction which happens in the core of star will be many many times more than what happens in Sun so the amount of because remember all the st star is in a constant tension Stars are so huge that they ideally should have gravitationally collapsed because of their own mass. But then in the core nuclear fusion is happening and that fusion produces so much of energy that it is able to balance that collapse here. As long as nuclear fusion is happening, so you can think of the pura mature stage of star hai, that you have a core here and then you have rest of this star. Now star wants to gravitationally collapse because of its own mass but there is this pressure from core and that pressure comes from nuclear fusion. So as long as nuclear fusion is going on, stars will not collapse. But nuclear fusion is essentially happening because hydrogen is converting into helium. That hydrogen is fusing into helium. So once most of the hydrogen fuses into helium, then you do not have a lot of things which can prevent this gravitational collapse. Now here is the thing that the rate of conversion of hydrogen into helium is much much more in larger stars compared to smaller stars. So that is why first statement is not at all correct. That giant stars live much longer than dwarf star. Compared to dwarf star, giant stars have a greater rate of nuclear reaction. That is true and that actually explains that why giant stars will have shorter life. So if it shorter, then this answer would have been A here. That both statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1. So in this case, because first statement is not correct, immediately you have your answer as D. This is something which you cannot, unless you have some interest in astronomy, you have read about life cycle of star. Unless you do not know that, then it's a difficult question to answer. Right. Looking for an effective plan to begin your essay mains preparation? Adopt the structured approach of predecided themes and develop sharp essay writing skills. Break down complex topics to articulate your thoughts with logic and clarity. Enroll in the Vision IS essay enrichment program starting from 27th June, 1 pm. Build your essay writing skills into your biggest strength. I found some news in last one year about life cycle of star covered in the Hindu or Indian Express also had an article. But even then, this particular fact was not mentioned in those articles. So you cannot even answer this question. So you have to know it. You have to know that this greater rate of reaction actually means that giant stars will live shorter compared to dwarf stars. And the best example of dwarf star here is 
sun. Every year, you'll find a question from basic knowledge of biology. The only difference is that generally those questions are simpler to solve. This question is very specific and unless you have this specific information, it is an ultra difficult question. So this will be one of those questions which I highly recommend whenever I do test series discussion that do not attempt such questions unless you know about it. Because look at the options also. Maybe you have read something about nitrogen that it can act as a, let's say, some biosignaling molecule, uh, some oxide of nitrogen. But look at all the options, nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen pentaoxide. You cannot, you have to have this very precise information that it is nitric oxide which does that. It is NO which does that. So a few options I can eliminate. For example, nitrous oxide, N2O, nitrous oxide is very popularly called that laughing gas used as anesthetic. So anesthetic gas produced inside body, that does not make sense, right? So maybe you can eliminate N2O. Maybe you can also eliminate nitrogen dioxide. It is uh, one of the dangerous atmospheric pollutants. Breathing nitrogen dioxide causes lung related problem. Even NO is, but turns out this nitric oxide, NO, that in very small amount acts as a signaling molecule in our body, which helps in dilation of our blood vessel, relaxes blood vessel, which is very important for blood flow. And that is very important for then your heart health and overall uh, body's health. So that is this, what this question is, that which one of the following is synthesized in human body that dilates blood vessels and increases blood flow. So this is a very specific question with very specific options given. And unless you are not very sure about it, then these are some of those questions which should not be attempted in paper. You have to remember that UPSC gives some questions. So you don't attempt to leave any questions. This will be one of those questions which should not be attempted. Now, whatever we have discussed, ideally, you should try to attempt them. There is some logic behind it which can be utilized. And you can get, in fact, right answer in most of the time. Just say, I, I, I don't think I will be able to eliminate nitrogen pentaoxide, pentaoxide, N2O5, and between nitric oxide. In fact, I know that even nitric oxide in larger amount is an atmospheric pollutant. So I, I also know that NO very soon oxidizes to NO2, but it is considered an atmospheric pollutant. So if I try to apply some logic, then I will perhaps go for N2O5. But this is again one of the basic facts in biology, which you know then very well. If you do not know, simply leave this question. So nitric oxide does play a very important role in that uh, dilating blood vessels, which smooths or which helps in smooth blood flow in body. Very important for blood circulation. Okay, this is a question where our answer will differ from other institutes. Many of the institutes have given C as the answer here, all three. I don't think C is the correct answer. So I will go for B here, that there are two options which are correct. First is not correct. And let me explain. So pehle to radars, pata hona chahiye. Like radars, jo hai, often radars, we study about radars in defense technology. Jab hum defense ke mein padte, that the purpose of radar is to monitor an object into air, in atmosphere. But then we also learn about its principle, that how does it work? A radar emits radio frequencies, goes silent, that radio frequency will be reflected by some object, how much time it took for that reflection to occur, how much was that shift in frequency because of Doppler effect, based on all of that, a radar can determine the speed, direction, shape of an incoming object very powerful 
method for defense technology. But then this is also applied in weather prediction. Just think of Indian Meteorological Department, IMD. IMD has many Doppler radars located in all part of our country. Its purpose is that the clouds study the rainfall ko study the overall atmospheric parameters ko study kare, which will help them in predicting weather two, three, four days in advance. Right? So two is very obviously true. That monitoring of precipitation, that is very obviously true. That yes, that is one of the application. But even one of the very interesting application of radar is tracking migration of animals, particularly very small animals. Think of small animals like bats, or which move in a very large herd, that they migrate from one area to another area. So rather than monitoring one, in fact, let me show you a picture I have collected. This is a radar-based image which is looking at how bats migrate from one location to another location. And all of those hot spots which you see, those hot spots are where bats are concentrated. And you can literally monitor them as they are transitioning from one location to another location. So radar imaging is one of the most powerful technique which has applications in space technology also. We do use that in remote sensing satellite. We do use that in prediction of weather. But why I think first statement is not correct. Many institutes have given this to be correct. They have given this answer C. Now I will tell you, when you go to the airport, there will be a gate there. Uh, of course, there will be proper physical checking. But you also go via a gate. Now, what type of technology is being utilized at this, at this gate? It can be an X-ray scan. It can be a proper X-ray tomography, a tomographic scan, which includes X-ray frequencies from multiple direction, and any hidden objects can be easily found. So, one of the obvious technique we use during scanning a body, that if somebody is hiding something, will be X-ray. But some of the countries, particularly US and China, not in India, they have also started using millimeter waves. Millimeter waves are the same which radars use. We are talking about, again, radio frequencies here. Certain frequencies are also utilized by typical radar. And the same way X-ray can cross through solid objects, even millimeter waves can cross through solid objects. Think about it. I can receive a phone call inside this room even if everything is closed here. So clearly for radio waves, these walls are not opaque per se. Radio waves can easily cross through this wall. So millimeter waves can again similarly be utilized to image a person. And the best part here is that millimeter waves, they have very less frequency, so they do not have any problem with human health. Continuous bombardment of X-ray, that can cause problem, that can cause mutations. Millimeter waves cannot. So very safe way to know about if somebody is hiding something with help of millimeter wave. So because Somehow it's principle, it's similar to how radar operates. It is also utilizing radio frequency. And some institutes have considered this to be that, yes, it is an application of radar. Now I have two contentions here. That why I don't think this to be correct. The first contention here is that nobody uses the radar for it. The term radar, this, go and search about it. This is called advanced imaging. using millimeter waves. Everywhere, the term which is used for this particular type of scan is called advanced imaging millimeter wave. Nobody uses the term radar for it. So scientific principle same hone ka matlab ye nahi hai, that I can use radar anywhere I want. I can use this term radar anywhere I want. Chalo, theek hai. Bhi, let's interpret it liberally. Let's say that scientific principle is same. I can call it a radar. Then also look at this particular part. The identification of narcotics on passengers, by the way, that is a very specific application in aircraft. Now let me show you how this imaging scan occurs. This is a picture representing monitoring migration of animals. You can monitor cloud precipitation with help of radar. That can also happen. 
But this is what those scans look like. It essentially is a gate where you go and stand, your image is created and you can find any hidden object inside the body. How you are going to have that gate inside aircraft? So that in aircraft clearly cannot be utilized with help of advanced imaging scan. And I will go back to earlier logic also that advanced imaging using millimeter wave, nobody uses the term radar for it. So for me, that first statement is not correct. Answer should be B here rather than C. So I'm going to mark the correct answer for this question. Only two, B should be the correct answer and particularly two and three. First, I will not mark it to be correct option. This is again one of the easiest question in the paper. You only need to, needed to know one fact to answer this entire question. That fact is that our most powerful fighter aircraft is Rafael, hai, which we bought from France, right? Those 36 fighter jets we bought from France. And Rafael belongs to generation 4.5. So the moment you recall that fact, you immediately know that none of the aircrafts we have belong to fifth generation. An answer is none of the above, right? So it's, it's actually quite a simple question if you know about our Indian Air Force. A brief discussion about this term fifth generation. The generation term, hai, we often use this in technological domain that whenever things improve on certain parameter, we use first generation, second generation, third generation. Jaise, the most popular is in, of course, in mobile communication that we use 2G, 3G, 4G or 5G. But even in fighter jets, we have this concept of Wi-Fi we use Wi-Fi second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation Wi-Fi now is being implemented in some countries. So even in fighter jet, we use this concept of second, third, fourth, fifth generation. The first generation fighter jets, they, they were developed in during World War II. But after that, things have improved. Now, you can logically also imagine that on what parameters we will call a fighter jet first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Just in mobile ke case, mein, it was speed. That 4G ke comparison, mein 5G ka speed bahut zyada hai. It was latency that compared to 4G, 5G ka latency bahut kam hai. It was connection density, how many devices can be supported by 5G network compared to 4G network. But think of what will be the same parameters in case of fighter jet. It will be how much weapons you can carry. Kitne type ke, kitne variety ke, and kitne zada up weapon carry kar sakte ho, first thing. Second thing, how fast you can fly. Third thing, how well you can hide yourself from enemy radars and sonar systems. Just go stealth hum bolte hain, toh jitna better aapka stealth hoga, you will belong to advanced generation. Fourth, how well you can maneuver into the sky. Maneuverability ka meaning yaha pe ye hoga, that how quickly you can change your direction, you can flip all of those things. Do you have some sort of advanced threat detection system which can intercept an incoming threat beforehand? So are you equipped with your own powerful radar system which can detect an incoming threat? So on all of those parameters, do you have air-to-air -air refueling capability? So on all of those parameters, you can decide that if a fighter jet belongs to first, second, third, fourth, or fifth generation. Rafael belongs to 4.5. MiG-29, which was the earlier MiG-29, that belonged to, in fact, third generation, but that was upgraded. And that upgraded MiG-29 belongs to fourth generation. And Tejas also belongs to fourth generation, a light combat aircraft developed by India, by HAL. So that is out of three, only one is indigenous here, Tejas. Rafael we bought from France. MiG-29 we bought from Russia. But Rafael belongs to generation 4.5. 
the rest two belongs to generation four. None of them belong to generation five. In fact, India does not have a fifth generation fighter aircraft. So if you know this fact, then you immediately know the answer is none of the above, right? So Rafael here, the most powerful fighter jet we have. And then this light combat aircraft Tejas, one of the lightest in its generation and MiG-29 which we have bought from Russia. But none of them are from a fifth generation aircraft. The next question is, now height, yeah, again this is another area which has become very popular for UPSC. I often say that in classes also, that material science is one of the most uh, important but also one of the least talked technology which we talk about. Just when we think of technology, we talk about like big things, astronomical developments in astronomy, in space technology, in nuclear technology, in artificial intelligence. But we often forget that all of the technologies, they progress because of unique type of materials. That what type of materials we are using. Just like our mobile phone, we often think of how much storage it has, how much processing capability it has. But we forget that uh, even to make a particular transistor and how to design billions of transistors into a very limited area, you need specific type of materials. So materials science, jo hai, that is one of the most important branches of technology. Chahe wo rocket banana ho, chahe mobile phone banana ho, chahe medicine banana ho. Medicine kiska banega? A medicine which does not cause toxicity inside your body, and your body can receive that medicine. Even that involves knowledge of material science. So it is one of the most important branches of technology. And again, this is another area where UPS is asking at least one question from material science in last few years. Last year, there was a question on carbon fiber. Before that, there was a question about carbon nanotube. So you, you expect this question from unique type of materials which are in news a lot in prelims examination also. So what type of material hydrogel is? In fact, hydrogel in its bulk form can look something like this also. There are certain hydrogels you can buy from Amazon also. Amazon pe jake search karna hydrogel, you will get this small uh, pellets, some sort of pellets. Aap isko pani mein rakhoge, ye chota sa pellet hoga, pani mein rakhte hi bada sa ho jayega. So what is happening here? Hydrogel is one of the most interesting material. It is a polymer. So first thing which we should know that it is a polymer. Polymer matlab iska kuch building block hoga. But these polymers are linked together in a very interesting manner. A particular way how they link together is called cross-linking. That they are not arranged linearly, but they are arranged in a cross-linked manner. And the building blocks, honge, they may be soluble in water. All of these are hydrophilic material. Hydrophilic ka kya matlab hota hai? Any molecule which attracts water, we call it hydrophilic. Anything which repels water, we call it hydrophobic. So hydrogels are made of hydrophilic materials. Building blocks are hydrophilic. And many hydrophilic things are often soluble in water. And even hydrogel ke jo building blocks honge, just if you take few of them, one strand of that polymer, that will dissolve in water. But then you create many strands in a way that the more complex it becomes, it becomes insoluble. But even though it is insoluble, the fact that it is extremely hydrophilic, keep that in water and it can absorb a lot of water, contain a lot of that water and will not allow that water to escape. So a very small hydrogel, despite very small in size, can contain huge amount of water, but not just water. If I dissolve something in water, then it is going to absorb that thing also and it will not allow that thing to be escaped very easily. It will be like, like this very jelly-like substance somewhere at the border of solid and liquid and it has then applications in multiple areas. The most important application is ka hai, which was asked, the first thing is drug delivery. The second most important application is in tissue engineering. So the two most important applications are hydrogel. Ka. Both of them are in medicine. The first is controlled drug delivery and the second is in tissue engineering. Let me explain that. Hydrogel, pe you have, let's say for example, jo bhi therapeutic part of medicine hai, that is stored inside a hydrogel. 
and then hydrogel can be controlled it can release that material depending upon temperature depending upon ph and it can slowly release that material all of that material will not be immediately released one of the biggest problem in pharma is that it adopts a one size fit all approach we take medicine for similar symptom everybody is taking same thing doses also is not often controlled and because of that lot of medicines have lot of side effect so hydrogel ka jo sabse important application ye hai that it reduces that side effect it releases that medicine part gradually rather than everything simultaneously and that is what this question is asking so first statement is true that it is used in controlled drug delivery it has also applications in tissue engineering because it is biodegradable does not cause any type of infection so it can it has applications in repairing damaged tissues also but the third should also be very clear now preparation of industrial lubricants water can be a great lubricant so you are essentially using hydrogel which contains water or other dissolvable substance in water which aims to reduce friction between components and it can act as a lubricant so first and third jo hai wo bhi true hai but even second is true and why second is true because jo typical air conditions hai chalo they are using some sort of hfc hydrofluorocarbons or some other gases they are producing freons inka apna mechanism hai room ko cool karne ka but one of the most traditional way of cooling is what evaporation jaise simple sa example lo ki aap फ्रिज में पानी रख सकते हो बट आप पॉट में भी रख सकते हो मिट्टी के घरे में भी रख सकते हो जो मिट्टी के घरे का पानी है दैट कूल्स डाउन वेरी फास्ट द रीजन इट कूल्स डाउन बिकॉज दो पोरस स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दैट पॉट इट अलाउज लॉट ऑफ इवापोरेशन एंड इवापोरेशन लीड्स टू कूलिंग दैट रीजन इज वेरी सिंपल बिकॉज मॉलिक्यूल्स विच इवापोरेट दे टेक अवे नेट एनर्जी फ्रॉम योर वाटर सैम्पल सो एज वाटर इज इवापोरेटिंग द नेट एनर्जी ऑफ रेस्ट ऑफ द वाटर विच इज लेफ्ट इज रिड्यूसिंग and its temperature is going to cool down so that is also a type of air conditioning and for hydrogel because they can contain lot of water and now we can with very small hydrogel we can store lot of water and we can allow that water to evaporate we can carry this things why that is why the word mobile air conditioning system is very important so rather than using some chemical reaction rather than producing freons you are actually leading to cooling with a sustainable manner simply using the process of evaporation the same way when you sweat a lot and immediately sit behind a fan you immediately feel cool simply because that sweat as it evaporates it reduces overall heat energy and the temperature comes down so hydrogel they can help in cooling by increasing the rate of evaporation simply because of the fact that they carry lot of water inside them so second was a difficult option overall i do think this is a difficult question because you do not come across hydrogel as a material in your regular classes or in regular newspapers also but anyways the answer here is d 1 2 and 3 are you struggling to understand ethical theories and their practical applications many upsc aspirants face this challenge when preparing for the ethics mains paper do a aspirants conquer it Vision IS presents the ethics case studies classes from 30th June 5 pm master the fundamentals of ethics with a clear structured approach stay ahead by interlinking topics with current events and real world scenarios i did find a reference about hydrogel in fact the very first application this was published also the patent has been granted for the development of pharmaceutical formulation of electro responsive smart hydrogel for transdermal drug delivery so that very first application of hydrogel was published in hindu and this is news from july 2023 so somebody picking up hydrogel and then asking other applications also from this specific topic one of the again easiest question of this paper is this is very simple the answer is metaverse right so metaverse was in news again it was in news a lot 2 3 years ago when it was launched facebook ki jo in fact facebook renamed itself jo facebook incorporated and now the parent company is called meta incorporated so meta owns facebook meta owns 
Instagram. And the reason is that Mark Zuckerberg is betting big on this entire concept of metaverse. So metaverse is becoming very popular. That's some sort of digital simulation where you can participate. You can form a digital community. You can have property also. And that is what this question is asking. That which one of the following word phrases is most appropriate used in denote an interoperable network of 3D virtual world that can be accessed simultaneously by millions of users with the help of internet who can exert property rights over virtual items. That is actually becoming a very popular idea. The meta Facebook ka jo metaverse hai, they are using, they are trying to use some sort of their own currency. That you can buy some sort of digital with digital currency, you can find digital items. A lot of people value those digital items also. So metaverse, Zuckerberg thought that this is going to become very popular. It has not become that popular. I, I also think that it shouldn't become that popular. I do think that we already are too much involved in technology. We already are isolating ourselves a lot with our mobile phones and laptops. So social interaction already come over. And now comes metaverse that kuch bhi karne ke liye, is class ke liye, let's have some sort of digital simulation in virtual simulation, let's have this class. I do not want to live in that future. I do want the social interaction to continue. So I, I really am glad that metaverse is not becoming very popular. Maybe it will become quite popular in future. But in this question, this is one of the easiest questions. The answer is metaverse. And you can find, even though it was in news two, three years ago a lot, but even I, I found a lot of references about metaverse in last one year newspaper in both Hindu and Indian Express. So this is something which is always covered in newspaper and UPSA picked question from it. Right? So if you have any doubt, any questions in any of the questions we have discussed, you can ask. Go ahead and ask questions. So I will see you guys around. The con discussion will continue with other subjects.